everyone, it's me, Traveler Lily, here back with another um, video here on my YouTube channel. Um, today's video is going to be a book haul sort of video. And Oh, hi, Bella. Sorry, guys, I got distracted by my cat. She came over and wanted to see what was going on. So she may be in the shot here, guys. I apologize. And I apologize if you can't really see part of my face because the light's over here. Oh, there's my cat. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> my cat's in the way here. I'm so sorry. Um, and I'm sorry for all you guys who might have seen her butt. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah. Okay. Interesting introduction there that we had to the, the start of this video. <laughs> um, anyway, like I was saying, if you can't really see part of my face um, in the video... It's because I'm sitting in front of my first bookshelf here. Um, I have another bookshelf over by my desk, which you guys might have seen if you watched some of my previous videos. And um, then I have this bookshelf um, right here um, that used to be my brother's old TV stand um, before he ended up setting it on his dresser in his room and no one was using it. And so it was left in the office. And so I ended up using this kind of like as a third bookshelf. So yeah. So yeah. I'm trying this setup. Um, so let me know if you guys like like it this way or maybe one of my previous ways um, that I filmed in front of. Anyway, like I said, it's another book haul video. So let's get right on to it. The first book I had gotten um, in the past few months is 100% Luna Boy by... Um, Stephen Tooney. Um, it's a dystopian book because it takes place um, 2,000 years in the future, so it's dystopian. Um, anyway, it's about this book. Hang on, I'm just I'm not going to go and try to describe it for you because I'm terrible at describing, so I'm going to read the summary. Anyway, yeah, 2,000 years in the future. The moon has become a rundown experiment in terraforming and colonization with a dusty patona and a bright red sky. It is the only place 16-year-old Hermes Rexonen it's yeah, yeah, the main character's name is really hard to pronounce, so I'm sorry if I butchered it. Um, so, yeah, has ever known. Until he meets a girl from Earth called Windows Falling on Sparrows. Yeah, the name of, of the girl is kind of funny. Because when I read her name in the summary of this, I laughed so hard. Because, like, not, like, any offense to, like, the author and coming up with these names or anything. It's just, I just find it funny how he named the girl Windows um, Falling on Sparrows. I mean, to, like, it just seems kind of funny, and I'm not, you know, hating on anyone who decides to, you know, name kids like that, you know, or anything. It's just, it just seems kind of funny to me, personally. Um, she's in, in, incredibly, inspicably, I ah, can't read, <laughs> drawn to him, and his special, some say dangerous condition, Hermias, is 100% Luna Boy. His ability to see the fourth primary color allows him to see the future, path of time and matter. The color of his eyes is against lunar law, and some say against nature. Looking into them triggers madness or even death. Authorities say so. He is to forced to wear goggles. After breaking the moon's most serious law and exposing his eyes to the curious young earth girl, Humorous embarks on a tre treacherous Misadventure to protect his friends, save his family, and escape imprisonment on the far side of the moon. So, yeah. Um. Ba basically, about that summary, it's basically a dystopian, like I said, um, t that takes place 2,000 years, years in the future, where basically the moon, um, has become an experiment. And I'm so sorry my dogs are barking. If you can hear them in the background. I apologize. There's so much noise going on in this video. I'm deeply sorry for that. Um, so yeah. 
if you're into dystopian and you want to read a dystopian book, I would highly recommend this one. Um, yeah. Next one is Not on Fire But Burning by Greg Herbeck. Um, this, I think, is another dystopian. Let me read the summary for you guys. A heart racing spectacle novel ripped from today's headlines. Um, 20-year-old Skyla saw it from the window, a metallic object that descended from the sky at a terrific speed, slowed above the Golden Gate Bridge, and then severed the bridge's um, suspension cables before a toxic mushroom cloud lifted above San Francisco. Flash forward to a future America where no one knows who is responsible for the explosion in San Francisco, or even what the explosion was, exactly. But Muslims have, they have nonetheless been herded onto the old Indian reservations in the West. In suburban New York, Skyla's little brother Dorian is 12 and dreaming about killing Muslims when his next door neighbor adopts a Muslim orphan from the territories. That simple act of benevolence will set off a series of increasingly terrifying incidences that force an entire community to reckon with their most deeply held beliefs, and for Dorian, will lead to either tragedy or redemption. So, yeah. It, basically, um, it's a book of what would it be like if, basically, San Francisco had a terrorist attack, and, of course, this takes some elements of today's society where we basically, um, discriminate, um, people based upon the, you know, um, race and culture, and I really just like how, um, it tackles the whole, as like, one of the aspects of racism, and how we define character, not only based on religion, but based on our entire culture, and I just really was interested in that, you know, so I had to pick up. Um, the next one is another book that takes place in San Francisco, but not, like, around San Francisco, but, like, in San, Fran San Francisco's Chinatown. And that is City of Dragons by Kelly Stanley. Mm -hmm. And the summary for this one is, February 1940, in San Francisco's Chinatown, private investigator Miranda Corby discovers the dead body of Eddie Takanashi. The cops want the killing covered up. From Chinatown's tendance to a high-class bo Borolo, Miranda seeks the truth in this brilliant mystery. So yeah, it basically, like I said, takes place in San Francisco's Chinatown um, in the 1940s, so basically around, basically World War II, and um, it tackles a mystery that obviously, like I said in the summer, like it said in the summary, the police won't cover it up, but this investigator wants to solve it, um, and kind of what, what was going on, and, so yeah, I just like this one, because I was really, I, um, because I was really curious about, um, what life was like for people in Chinatown, particularly in San Francisco, because you don't really get a lot of stories that feature immigrants living, like, in a big city, particularly those, I think, a Chinese descent, I believe, I could be wrong, I don't know a lot of books that have characters of Chinese descent or of Chinese ethics. So, um, yeah. I definitely thought this was interesting to see because, um, there's not really, I don't think a lot of, I don't think there's a lot of stories on people who live in Chinatown in San Francisco. Um, you usually get a lot of people who, who write stories about people living in New York or LA or other places, but not really so much Chinatown. So, I can't wait to read this one. <laughs> the next one is How's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne Jones. I did a book review not that long ago um, on this, so I would highly recommend you guys check out that video for it if you haven't already. I'll probably leave it in the iCard above or down in the description. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't already know... Um, what's about, if you have checked out my review for it, basically it's about this girl named Sophie, who's the oldest of three daughters, and so when her father dies, after, you know, he is remarried, um, her stepmother, um, 
sends her two younger sisters away to a bakery and to be an apprentice of a witch. And so basically, um, Sophie ends up becoming um, the heir since she's the oldest. Um, inherits her dad's hat shop. Um, but she ends up getting turned into an old woman by the Witch of the Waste and ends up seeking Hal and his moving castle to try to break, not only break her curse, but Hal's curse. And so that's all I could say about this book without going into further details um, about it. So, yeah. Um, the next one is Matched by Ali Conde. Um, this is another dystopian um, novel that I had gotten um, not that long ago. Um, I hadn't really heard anything too much about this book whatsoever, so I don't really know um, too much about it um, at all. But it seems like it's about this girl named Casa who basically has to, you know, choose between two guys and this matching system or something or whatever, but yeah, I don't really know anything too much about it. Um, I kind of haven't really heard anything good about it, but I wanted to check it out anyway because it seemed interesting, so yeah. Um, next one is Lady of Ashes by Christine Turret. Um, and the summary for this one is only a woman with an iron backbone could succeed as an undertaker in Victorian London, but Violet Morgan takes great pride in her trade, while her husband, Graham, is preoccupied with elevating um, the station in society. Violet is cultivating a sterling reputation for Morgan undertaking. She's empathetic. Ah, uh, I cannot read. Um... Well versed in funeral fashions and comfortable with death's wool in life, until its chilling rattles comes knocking onto her own front door, Violet's particular but happy life soon begins to unravel as Graham becomes obsessed with his own demons and all but abandons her as he plans a vengeful scheme. And the solace she's always found in her work evaporates like a. a I think it went out, guys. I'm so sorry if it went out. Now it's completely dark. Can I... Oh, I think it died. I think that's what happened. But I'm so sorry. <laughs> so sorry, guys, if you can't see me anymore. Um. So, um. But I guess I'll... I guess I'll move it. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can move it a bit. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I was not expecting it to go out like that, so I deeply apologize. Um, and the soul she's always found in her work evaporates like a departing soul when she suspects that some of the deceased she's dressed have been murdered. When Graham's plotting leads to his disappearance, Violet takes full control of the business and is commissioned for an undertaking of royal proportions. But she's certain there's a killer lurking in the London fog, and the next funeral may be her own. So yeah, it is another historical fiction novel, um, just like City of Dragons. And I can't wait to read um, more about it, considering we don't really get to see a lot of books featuring women as undertakers, or undertakers in general. So, yeah. The next one is... Flora and Eucerces by Kate DeCamo. I'm not sure if I featured this one in a previous book haul or not. I wasn't too sure about um, some other ones I have on my shelf, if I featured them in a previous book haul or not, but here is Flora and Eucerces by Kate DeCamo. Um, so basically, it's about this girl named Flora who loves reading comics and kind of is... I don't know, is a little carefree-ish, I guess, or whatever. Um, and then she ends up saving the squirrel who ends up getting sucked up by a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> which kind of went out of control um, on her neighbor's front lawn, and she ends up reviving it, and in the process, the squirrel, Eucerces, ends up gaining superpowers, and from there, her adventures just start 
with the squirrels. So, yeah. <laughs> um, the last book is Pendragon Before the War, Book One of the Travelers by DJ McHale. Um, this is book one of a prequel series um, to um, the Pendragon series by Kate. Okay, um, DJ um, McHale. Um, if you don't know, um, the Pendragon series is a ten book series. Ten book young is, uh, is a ten book series of young adult books um, by DJ McHale, um, which follows Bobby Pendragon. Um, starting from when he was 14, all the way up until he was like around 19 um, years of age, as he tries to save um, these many different territories and save Hala um, and from this evil person named Saint Dane. Um, I have a book review on um, Pendragon, but the uh, Merchant of Death book one up on my channel. Again, I'll leave it in the iCard above or in the description below. Um, so I would highly recommend if you would check that out as well. So, um, this basically follows some of Bobby's um, companions um, before um, Bobby ever showed up and ultimately defeated Satan Dane. Um, so, it gives some of the side characters more depth and character that then you probably would have seen in the Pendragon books if you read them. So yeah, um, that's all the books I got for um, for this year so far. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend any of those books to anyone who are interested in reading them. So yeah, I guess that's it. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!